This is an introduction to GIMP image processing software we're going to be using for this week's lab. I have opened up GIMP. Here is the GIMP. GIMP, um, if you didn't read in the introduction, you can get GIMP for free from GIMP.org. It's a free software, open source software package. Um, it's similar to Adobe Photoshop except it has almost all the same tools except Adobe Photoshop is extremely expensive and GIMP is freeware. This is the toolbar, tool window. Um, it gives you all the same type of type of tools you can do with any paint type program. Uh, switching between like say text to fill bucket fills to fill your um, gradients, drawing, and a lot of other moves and transform and smudges and different types of tools you'll be able to use for your images or from painting a picture from scratch. The bottom down here shows the dialog type windows. So under this first uh, tool options dialog here, if I select on any of these tools that are up here, such as the alphabet here where I can text editor, now down here at the bottom the dialog switches to being able to edit what type of text I'm putting on my image. Right now I don't have an image open. If I had an image open there'd be another window over here that would show my image, which I'll do here in a second. But um, we're going to probably be using text and some animation we're going to be doing in, in part of the assignment. So when you click on the text, it allows you to change which font you're using, the size you're drawing with, the color you're drawing with, justifications, and all the other type of stuff you can do with most text editors. Uh, if I switch over here to the paint bucket, on the paint bucket now I have lots of different types of editing I can do um, for the, with the dialog for the paint bucket. Here's a gradient and for drawing. Now from the drawing I can scale it to make it bigger or larger. I can change the brush. The, all these different types of brushes. I can even draw with a green pepper it looks like there. There's a lot of different types of brushes. And there's actually a lot of other brushes you can download as a plug-in. Draw with some transparency. Um, the mode, jitter, different, a lot of different types of tools for this dialog. The next dialog that I have on my tabs here, which you might not have, which I'll explain to you how to add if you don't have it there yet, or you might have some others in there by default. The other one I have here is layers. Anytime you want to add or subtract a different tab for your dialog window down here, this little arrow here, if you click on that arrow, you can go to add tab. Here's all your choices of different tabs. So if you don't have the layers tab, you can select this now and it will give you the layers tab like I have here. Or you can here's the tools. This is the this is the, if I I'll click on tools here, add tab tools. And that gives me basically if you look, this is all the same stuff that's up here, but it gives me into the dialog windows down here. I don't want this tools because I already have them up here, so what I will do is I'll I will remove the tools dialog. I can do a couple of different things, but the easy way to do it is to just click on it and drag it off. And then it opens up a window on its own. And you can, all these tab dialogs, you can create their own windows if you would like. And then I can just click and close that, and now it's gone. So let's say I want to add a new tab. I want to add all, um, a history or a pointer. I'll just add another layers since I'm already using layers. I already have a layer, so now I have two layers tabs. I don't need two layers tabs, of course. So I'll click, drag close I got rid of that layer tab so now I have my tools and my layers these are the two we're going to use in most of the uh, little projects we're going to do this week so I'm going to leave these two on here and I'll open up a on the file pull down menu here you have a lot of different choices one is new so I'm going to create a new image create a new image pulls up the new image dialog box it gives me a choice of width and size this is pixels so by default I'll just use 420 by 300 now just to make it easy I'll put it 300 by 300 so you can put in 300 by 300 I don't have any templates well there's some templates in here but I don't have one that I'm actually going to use at this point I'm just going to leave that blank 300 by 300 there are advanced options where you can change the color space background color created with GIMP by Hunter Lloyd gives it a image um, creation when you're looking at it in Windows that will pop up uh, 
the resolutions. I'm just going to keep all that by default. Hit OK. It creates a RGB window of just a blank 300 by 300 white canvas. Now if I click on say paint bucket I can go into the colors. I can say on the RGB values here that's red, green, blue. I'm going to say I want full red no blue, no green, which gives me a red color. So if you see here under current, that is red. I'm going to say OK. We're going to draw with red. Paint bucket. Fill the whole selection. Fill the whole selection. Now I have a red background. Go over to my paintbrush and click on the paintbrush. And now I'm going to say I'm going to draw with a 0.23 scale. I'm going to draw, but if I draw right now, I'm drawing in red, it just paints in red, so I can't see anything. So I'm going to switch this to blue, take out the red, so now I'm drawing with completely blue here. Here's the old, if I wanted I could click on that to get back to what I had, or in this way I'm going to click on, I don't need to click on current, but current, hit OK. Now I'm drawing in blue as you see here. So there's my 0.23 line. I'll move it up a little bit to 0.48. It gets a little thicker. Just to show you, I can get it much thicker. You can apply a jitter to it. I'll move the jitter, move it back down to about a 2-ish. Move the jitter up just so you can see it well. And see that's what jitter. And there's a lot of other type of uh, a fade out. So it starts fading quickly because I have it up high. Move that down a little bit more. It fades. It starts fading out as you can see. A lot of different filters you can do on all of this this type of stuff. This is all the from the GIMP main main window. Um, now that I have an image open, I have all these pull downs also. For instance, in filters, there's animation down here, which we're going to use in one of the assignments you're going to do this week. But I'll just show you another, say for instance, I'll use a blur glossy and blur. I can give it a threshold so I'm very high right now. I'll move it down to about 30. Click on it. Now I've got a blurred. I've blurred my image. If you don't like it you can do undo and it would take it out. The other thing now I've got this let's say I got this the way I want it now but I gotta add some more stuff to it afterwards. I can go over here to my layers now. Click on new layer transparent so basically it just puts a sheet of glass over the top of this so now everything I draw now I'll change the colors to say yellow yellow is full red full green and no blue and now my color here is yellow as you see and now I'm gonna do some more drawing lines this way with yellow and I've messed up I've messed up, but if you see down here now, on my new layer is where all the yellow is. The background stays the same. I don't like what I did with yellow. I can click on this new layer, click the trash can, get rid of that layer. Now my yellow's all gone. I still have my original, so I didn't have to destroy it. Click another layer, add another layer, and I can now draw the way I want her to do it. And then I'm okay. Alright, this is just a little introduction of some of the different things you can do. I can color balance, tell it I want more yellow in the whole thing with less green, or more green, excuse me, and less yellow and, and uh, cyan. And then when I click it, it didn't do a lot to it, so, but the, you can change the filters on different things. We're going to do that again later where it will actually change. Um, and there's a lot of other different things in here. So that's your introduction. Now we're going to get into actual assignments where we're going to make an animated GIF, which will, will animate some text across the screen.